If you're starting a podcast today, one of the confusing decisions you're eventually going to run into is podcast hosting. Where does my show live? How do I get it to Apple, Spotify, and all these other platforms? And do I really need another tool just for hosting? Riverside recently added podcast hosting. And in this video, I'm going to show you how the podcast hosting feature works, how it compares to other tools like Buzzsprout and Libsyn, and when it actually makes sense to use it. Now, some quick context first. I've been podcasting since 2016. And back then, I was using Libsyn. That was the popular go-to. But it was unnecessarily expensive because they charged you based on um, the file size that you were actually uploading versus something like Buzzsprout, which charges you for you know a certain amount of hours per month. And so eventually, some of my clients were using Buzzsprout, and I eventually got my entire roster and myself to move from Libsyn to Buzzsprout. And since then, there have been so many different tools that have popped up, like Substack offers hosting. But I will say that if I was starting a brand new show today, I'm not sure that I'd automatically sign up for a separate hosting tool. And that's because I'm probably already using Riverside for recording or for some of the editing features. And so it allows me to keep everything streamlined and all in one place since there is now a hosting feature. So this opens up room for hosting to not be an extra add-on. Now, you're probably thinking about some free tools out there like Substack, which I use and love, but Substack is not very robust when it comes to their hosting features. It is It allows you to start and get in the game, um, but you're definitely missing out on some of the things, especially because because Riverside is very podcast first, right? And so they're just going to come at a lot of their developments with a totally different lens than something like a writing first platform like Substack. And what's interesting is most tools are not strong all across the board in each category. But Riverside has actually started with being the best in, you know, world class recording. And then they gradually added editing features that have now become very competitive with some of the best tools out there. And then now the hosting layer really makes you be like, wow, okay, I can actually do everything from this one tool. Now let's quickly cover what podcast hosting actually means. So at a basic level, podcast hosting does three things. Number one, stores your episode files. Number two, creates your RSS feed. And number three, allows you to distribute your show to listening platforms. And of course, Riverside does all three. So once you're logged in and in the dashboard, which by the way, if you click the link in the description below, you can get a free trial to Riverside and also get 15% off using the code PODMAHAL. So if you take a look on your left hand side, you're going to see studio, home, project, schedule, and hosting. Hosting is where we are going to dive into today. And so one of the things that you're going to do is create a new podcast. And we're assuming for this part that you don't have an existing show that you're importing. But if you did, this also does have the option to do that. So we're going to go ahead and click create new podcast. Okay, so this is where you're going to put your show name. I'm going to put this for now. Um, we'll hit continue. And then also this is where, you know, the main description for your show goes. So when people tap your show on Spotify or Apple, they're going to be able to see this line here. Next up, you're going to choose your podcast categories. You can choose up to two. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of tap this for now. Uh, and then let's continue. Now, this is where you're going to add your podcast cover art. Very important step here to make sure that this is high quality because if the dimensions are off, this is going to cause you issues when you are distributing it to other platforms. So I would recommend, you know, have a designer do it for you um, and make sure that they give you a version in 3000 by 3000 pixels. Or if you're doing it yourself, design in Canva. And if you select new project, podcast cover art, it typically comes standard uh, when you export um, that you'll, you'll be within these dimensions. So you'd select your file. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put mine as a placeholder for now. Next up, we're just going to finalize some of this, make sure that your name is spelled correctly and all this is accurate. And then we're going to hit set up podcast. Now, quick but important clarification. If you are hosting somewhere else and you're going to be importing your episodes, you're going to select this option down below 
And you could also have selected it, you know, uh, before we created our new show here, but we're going to hit this. You're going to type the existing show name and it's going to be able to pull that up. Um, if it's already published elsewhere, you can also take the RSS feed link from your other hosting tool and paste that here as well. Now, I'm not going to do that because I don't want it to actually pull um, things right now because this is just a test. But what it would do is pull all the metadata, pull the episodes, pull the descriptions, all those things for you. When you transfer your podcast host, your historical download data stays with the old host. And this is not just specific to Riverside. This is true with every tool out there. So for me, when I transferred from Libsyn to Buzzsprout, this was the case. Um, and so it's just kind of a part of the game, which is why you want to make sure that the hosting tool that you choose is something that's going to be around for a while. You like the interface of it's not too expensive all of that stuff which riverside fits and then of course once you switch everything from the time that you migrated all future downloads will be tracked in riverside that's just normal podcast hosting behavior so i'm going to hit create new episode so you can see what that experience will look like once you hit create new you're going to type in the episode title uh you're going to want to follow a similar format right so for me like on habit chess this is something that i do my endings always have this long bar i have ep and then the number um let's say that you have a seasonal style right you could do s1 e4 season one episode four now you may not want to actually build that in there let's say you don't you want to actually fill that information out in the episode details area that's fine too. Just make sure that if you're going to be doing that, that is a consistent practice that you do for each episode. Now, let's take a look at the actual file, right? So one of the things that you can do is because you have maybe edited in Riverside itself, you can actually click choose Riverside file and it allows you to basically search through all of the recent projects and files that you had and go ahead and select them, right? So um, that is pretty nice. Now the upload new file section is mainly for if you have exported the file already and it's on your computer. And so if you're like me, even though I have this option for choosing from Riverside, I'm a little bit, uh, I like to have the hard copy. I save it and back it up and things like Dropbox and whatnot anyways. Most people don't need to do that. And so this first option is gonna be plenty for you. But if you have the hard file somewhere else on your computer, you would hit that and upload through there. Okay, now this next section is where you're going to add your description add any links, add any show notes and chapters. Um, and you just want to make sure that any links that you do put here, you want to make sure that you actually hyperlink them with the correct format so they work when people click them. Um, again, this part is optional. If you wanted to do it, you can. Again, you can also in this section um, select if it's a trailer or bonus episode. Most things are going to be upload it as a normal episode. And then of course, if you have any explicit content, you would toggle this on. Now, once all of this stuff would be filled out, I have a file in here. I could basically schedule the episode or I could publish it immediately right now. Um, I'm going to show you what it looks like. Okay. I just selected random files and uh, put something here as a placeholder. Now, once this is all filled out, you basically will hit publish. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that it's not letting me schedule yet. It's saying you'll be able to schedule episodes after you connect a platform. Now let's cover how you actually get some of these episodes to go onto Apple, to Spotify, to YouTube, and these major platforms. So one of the things you're going to click is this three dots in the top right corner, hit copy RSS URL. And this is very important because any, you know, platform that you want to submit your show to, typically you're going to need that RSS link. And that will then allow you to copy over all the episodes and import everything um, without having to do anything, right? So once you actually manually submit to Apple, uh, once you submit to Spotify and YouTube, this is a typical thing, no matter what software you're using, Apple has its own, you know, submission process they want you to go through. And so you basically do all that upfront. And once that is done, 
then this is going to allow you to make all your updates from within here. And so you would hit the three dots in the top right corner, hit edit details, and this is where you can make adjustments to the description, categories, all that stuff that we did originally. And similarly, you would make any adjustments to, let's say you wanted to add a new link um, or move the order of a link or change a word in your description. Those things you would actually edit once we have an episode in here. So we talked about Apple and Spotify, but I also want to cover YouTube because there are two approaches that you can take depending on how you want to run your channel. So number one is going to be that you attach your RSS feed link to it when you hit new podcast inside of your YouTube channel. And that will basically, just like Apple and Spotify, pull all of the episodes and the data that you have from Riverside. Now, the second option sounds like more work at first, and it actually kind of is, but many creators prefer this route because of sometimes the um, you know flexibility that you have with let's say testing thumbnails and making certain adjustments um, that you might test on a video first platform like YouTube but you don't want to test on something like an Apple or Spotify and so in that case what you would do is manually upload to your podcast channel on YouTube and you know in the playlist section you would just select your podcast as a playlist that it's getting added to. And so that's a longer winded way of doing it. The trade-offs really uh, aren't worth it for most people to do it that way. It really makes sense to keep it streamlined and just do it all through Riverside if it allows you to. And so I just wanted to highlight that because there's no right or wrong here. It's just a preference thing. And so it's good to know that you can uh, do that. Now I want to talk about analytics real quick because this is where, if I'm being honest, I do think that Riverside has some work to do. And I know that they know that. They're going to be adding more features to this. They're going to be making it more robust over time to the point where it is very world class. But I do think as of now, tool like Buzzsprout, uh, which you do pay extra for, is a more detailed uh, you know, view into your analytics. You can see what devices people are listening on, what locations they are listening from, and all of this good stuff. So it just depends if that's worth it to you in the beginning. Um, but I think for most people, this is not going to be a big deal because you can access your analytics at all times from Apple's portal, from Spotify's portal. And this is a common practice with something like YouTube anyways, right? So Riverside, even though it may offer me details from how many downloads or views I got from YouTube, it's not practice for me to look there. I would actually go to YouTube Studio um, and there's just very detailed insight into things that you're not going to always have with your podcast hosting platform. And so um, analytics, they're good for kind of um, pulling in general data, but when you want to get specific, go to that platform itself, and typically they have a more detailed uh, overview of that. Next up, I want to talk about distribution reach. So one thing that something like Buzzsprout actually has, which is very good, is tons of directories that as soon as a new platform becomes popular, they, it gets added into this directory section. And for many of them, all you have to do is click a button and it gets submitted uh, to that platform. But the caveat here is that with something like Riverside, if you are actually uh, you know, uploaded to Apple and Spotify, since those are the major platforms, tons of other podcast directories that pop up typically pull from there anyways. So while Buzzsprout lists more integrations, the practical reach ends up being very similar for creators. So hosting in Riverside makes most sense if you already record in it, if you maybe already use it for editing, or you want to consolidate and use fewer tools, and you value simplicity over a lot of the fancy analytics and uh, things that other platforms offer. And so if that is you, I think Riverside is a perfectly great place to start when it comes to hosting your podcast. Make sure to check out the link in the description below because you can sign up for a free trial for Riverside using my link. And you can also get 15% off if you use my code 
Pod Mahal. I appreciate you hanging out, taking the time. And of course, let me know if you have any comments, any questions. I'd love to help. But I wish you the best of luck with your show, and I will see you on the next one.